Good evening, everyone. I'm WGXA Chief Meteorologist Jeff Cox. Clear and cold. That's the theme right now. At least one of those will not be lasting much longer. A live look over downtown. And if you look closely, some high clouds starting to filter in from the west. And that's a theme that will continue all night. Satellite pictures showing the clouds increasing as we speak. And as you go west of Atlanta, some brighter white on the map. That's where the thicker clouds are. And they'll continue to build in from the west all night. That's a sign of things to come for the weekend. In the meantime, cold right now. That's going to stick around all night. 38 in Macon, 42 Warner Robins. It's 37 in Forsyth, 43 Milledgeville, 37 Dublin, and 40 in Eastman. And we've still got some cooling left. Here's what you can expect hour by hour. The rest of the night, notice we stay in the 30s all night. Eventually mid-30s, we're still shy of 60 by lunchtime. You can thank the increasing clouds for that. Limited sunshine tomorrow, but no rain. The other weather story I'm tracking, winter-like temperatures for next week. I'll have the details you need in 10 minutes, but the news starts right now. Now, news that works for you. This is WGXA News. Next on WGXA News at 11, a former rookie cop on the Macon Police Force is charged with statutory rape. We'll have the very latest on the accused Rory Qualls. Plus, a small town thinks big to bring down a gun-toting robbery suspect. Their message to any criminal who wants to press their luck. And a chaptacular festival gets underway in the city of Gray as chainsaw artists spend the weekend carving up trees. Good evening and thanks for watching WGXA News at 11. I'm Raymond Tubb. Well, a former Macon police officer finds himself in jail tonight, charged with statutory rape. Rory Qualls is being held in the Bibb County Law Enforcement Center tonight, finding out how life is on the opposite side of the law. According to jail records, Qualls was arrested around 2.30 this afternoon on one count of rape. Qualls made news in the Macon Telegraph in March of this year when he was sworn in and proposed to his then fiance Miranda Bowers. A search of Facebook reveals that Qualls is now dating Jenny Rosalyn of Macon. We reached out to both women tonight about Qualls' arrest, but neither wanted to comment. Last hour, we heard from Macon Police Department spokesperson Jamie Gauday, who confirmed that Qualls was arrested and also confirmed his resignation afterwards. According to Gauday, the investigation into Qualls began yesterday when the mother of a 15-year-old girl accused Qualls of indecent behavior with her daughter. Qualls is jailed on an $11,000 bond. A 56-year-old Warner Robins man could spend his final days in jail after a judge sentenced him to a minimum of 34 years in prison for raping a fellow church member. Houston District Attorney George Hartwig says that Alden Bernard Thomas was found guilty by a Houston County jury earlier today. Superior Court Judge Ed Lutemeyer sentenced Thomas to life with a served time of 34 years with the Department of Corrections. After serving his sentence, Thomas will spend what is left of his life on probation with sex offender conditions. Criminals take note, you may want to avoid the Dodge County town of Rhine. It's being compared to scenes from those old western movies when the town comes together and brings down the bad guy. It's quite similar to what happened yesterday when an armed suspect tried ripping off a local convenience store. WGXA Shanti Tager is back from Dodge County and he tells you what happened. Everybody knows he was Something wasn't right. For 60-year-old Ken Lowry, the commotion began around 2.30 Thursday afternoon as he stepped inside Aiden's convenience store and encountered the store clerk in distress. The lady screamed at me and said, I've been robbed, he's got a gun, and I've gave him all the money. Lowry says he saw the suspected gunman identified as 24-year-old Damian Durham of Wilcox County walking down the street making a nonchalant getaway. Witnesses say it was a bizarre sight, but what happened next was even more unbelievable. People just kept coming around, and they were mad. People in Ryan was mad. Here we had an armed robbery in the middle of the day at Aiden, and they wanted to form a posse. Lowry says more than 20 people, many of them armed, spread out looking for the gunmen in trucks and on foot. We didn't have no leader of it all. Just We just went all our separate ways. And the people in Ryan, they meant they were going to get that rifle. Lowry ended up tracking the suspect down roughly 200 yards away from the store. He fired a warning shot from his deer rifle and says the suspect stashed a gun and money and hid in a nearby shed, where he was arrested by Dodge County Sheriff's deputies. Major Donald Helms says it's just a story of good guys with guns. 
people in a small town exercising their rights to bear arms. You might not want to come down there messing with the Ryan folks. While at least one longtime Ryan resident I spoke with says a stick up downtown isn't the most uncommon thing, everyone I talked to was proud of their town for coming together. I'm glad I stay in a town like this. Ryan is a good town. And gave a warning to outsiders that may be up to no good. But don't come to Ryan and mess with us. Because if you do, we're going to mess with you. A nice lady like that working at Asians, trying to make a living, and some thug coming out trying to rob her. People Ryan ain't going to put up with that. Shanti Tager, WGXA. The Dodge County Sheriff's Office says the jury is charged with armed robbery and that there are other charges pending. Well, Macon police are searching for two suspects after a man was shot during a robbery on Rocky Creek Road. Take a look at these surveillance photos that were released by Macon police. They want you to help identify and locate the two hooded suspects in the images. It's in connection with last night's shooting that left a 21-year-old man with a gunshot to his leg. The victim says that three black males approached him at the Rocky Creek Road McDonald's parking lot. One of them shot him for no apparent reason. If you can identify either of the hoodie-wearing suspects, call the Crime Stoppers at 877-68-CRIME. Macon police say a man was shot last night as he tried to get away from an armed attacker that was demanding money. That victim told police that he was approached by a black man holding a pistol as he walked from the quick serve gas station at Womack and Wolf Fork Streets. It happened just before 10 last night. The victim says he threw the cash on the ground and ran but was hit by a bullet. He then drove to the medical center and was treated for a gunshot to the arm. If you have any information on the shootings, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 877-68-CRIME. Preliminary autopsy results are back on a Baldwin County teen who drowned at Georgia College this weekend. But the medical examiner wants to see toxicology results before issuing a final ruling. And that may take several weeks. 14-year-old Tyreek T.J. Jackson accidentally fell into a pool at Georgia College's Centennial Center Saturday and couldn't get back out again. Investigators say that surveillance video shows two other boys climbing into the locked and fenced area with Jackson before the drowning. Jackson was a student at Baldwin High School. Baltimore County Schools Campus Police Department, or excuse me, Bibb County Schools Campus Police Department rededicated its headquarters in honor of an officer lost three decades ago. Today at its building on Anthony Road in Macon, the Bibb BOEPD renamed its campus police facility in memory of Officer Yul Thomas Smith. Smith was killed in the line of duty back in 1983, but 30 years later, his sacrifice is not being forgotten. It's, it's been a long time coming. Uh, we are very appreciative to the folks that uh, spearheaded this and really pushed to get it done. Back on April 22nd of 1983, Officer Smith was shot and killed by a prisoner he was transporting. Smith had served with the Bibb County Board of Education Police Department for 11 years, and he had previously served with the United States Navy for two tours in Vietnam. He was 36 years old. Well, Catrice Allen, a fifth grade teacher from Rosa Taylor Elementary School, is the 2014 Bibb County Teacher of the Year. Allen has taught in the Bibb County Schools for seven years. She taught high school science at Southwest High before moving to Rosa Taylor Elementary School, where she now teaches fifth grade. District Teacher of the Year Catrice Allen tells you what she thinks makes a good teacher. A love of children. I think if you love children, you will make it fun and you will make it exciting. And not everything can be exciting and fun lessons, but you will go the extra mile to make sure that they understand concepts. You will do what needs to be done for students to be successful. Allen was one of seven finalists for District Teacher of the Year. Now that she's District Teacher, she will now compete for the title of Georgia Teacher of the Year. Well, hundreds of rodeo fans are coming to Perry this weekend to check out some of the best high school talent in the region. More than 300 high schoolers from across the country are competing in the Southeastern Showdown High School Rodeo at the Georgia National Fairgrounds. The athletes will be competing in 11 events for points and money with a trip to the National Championships in Wyoming on the line. Georgia's High School Rodeo Association President Carl Sims says that the students are some of the best high school athletes around. These are some of the best athletes that you'll ever see. I mean, they're going to ride. They're going to uh, be against um, bulls that are uh, professional grade bulls. They'll be roping calves that are 250 pounds. Uh, it's, it's exciting. The rodeo began tonight and runs from 7 in the morning to midnight tomorrow and 7 a.m. to 6 on Sunday. 
Well, later on WGXA News at 11, consolidation is closing in. We're going to show you how members of the Transition Task Force are already working together. And happening right now, the first annual Turnip Festival. It's going on in downtown Macon. We'll take a look into this new music festival. And Raymond, I think we'll have to turn up the heat tonight. It is going to be a cold one out there. Even colder next week, a winter like blast. I'll have that in your seven day coming up next. Seventeen years ago today, an F2 tornado touched down near Chester in Dodge County, blowing the tin roof off of an older home and blowing a steeple off of a church. That tornado also destroyed a double wide mobile home in which a seven year old girl was killed and six other family members injured. Also on this day in 1989, another F2 tornado touched down, this time in Wilcox County. It damaged a peanut warehouse and then moved into a residential area where the twister destroyed three mobile homes, killing one person and injuring eight. Property damage in that Wilcox County storm was estimated at $250,000. And Raymond, that's a perfect reminder there that severe weather is possible year-round in Central Georgia. It's kind of interesting that you, you know, in Macon and Central Georgia's history, not necessarily Macon, but in Central Georgia, you've had two fatal tornadoes on the same day. So one in 1989 and one in 96, and they're not spring storms. These are November storms. Uh, this year we've had a severe weather drought, so you have to remind yourself that we've always got to be watching the sky. Now, of course, there was no severe weather today. It was severe clear, and thankfully there's no thunderstorms in our forecast right now. So good news there. High pressure overhead. It's going to slide east overnight, and that's allowing clouds from the west to stream in, and they are moving in as we speak. A live look over downtown, and we can start to see some of the high clouds off in the distance, and they'll continue to move in overnight, leading to a mostly cloudy Saturday. 40 degrees right now with dew points in the upper 30s. A little breeze from the west at 3 miles per hour. Checking area thermometers. Whew, chilly. 38 in Forsyth and North Macon. The same in South Macon. Gray, you're a degree colder than that. You're at 37 right now in Jones County. Off into Warner Robins, low 40s. 39 now in Perry. The same in Fort Valley. And as we show all of Central Georgia, 30s in Sandersville and Thomaston. Butler, you're at 39. Eastman, 39 and 37 for our friends in Dublin. A chilly night all around, and unfortunately, we've got some more cooling to go before it's all said and done. Look at the change in temperature over the last 24 hours. A lot of negative signs, a lot of blue on the map, and that's a sign that we are colder than this time yesterday. And for some, making south and east, we are double digits colder than this time yesterday. So if you're going out this evening and overnight, you'll certainly need the winter jacket. Eventually, lows will be in the mid and upper 30s along and north of a line from Dublin to Warner Robins and Butler. Once you get south of Warner Robins, generally low 40s. Uh, patchy frost is certainly a possibility in the morning. Now, a mostly cloudy sky tomorrow means limited sunshine, and that means cool temperatures. Once you get north of Milledgeville and Forsyth, the 50s are likely. Low 60s here are making a Warner Robins, mid to upper 60s south. Everywhere below average for your Saturday. Again, that's with limited sunshine. So the satellite showing the clouds thickening up as they stream in from the west, brighter whites in Atlanta, and that's where the thicker clouds are, and they'll eventually get here after midnight. And our first look ahead shows a mostly cloudy Saturday. One thing we are certain of, though, with the limited sunshine, we're not expecting rain. We've got a dry forecast. The big story, big shifts in temperatures. So let's talk about the forecast as we see it right now. Tonight here in Macon and Bibb County, it's a mostly clear sky, and that equates to chilly weather, patchy frost, mid-30s for overnight lows. Then through the day tomorrow, those clouds really build in. A mostly cloudy day and fairly cool because of that. So low 60s with an east wind at 5 to 10. Your seven-day forecast for all of central Georgia. Thankfully, we're back in the 70s Sunday and Monday. Veterans Day looks absolutely beautiful for any of the uh, observances for the uh, Veterans Day uh, ceremonies there. But after that, the winter-like temperatures roll in. And we're tracking that cold blast for the middle of next week. Wednesday and Thursday, highs in the 50s. And by Thursday morning, we'll be flirting with the 20s for overnight lows. Fishing game forecast, we're looking at peaks well in the good range. Bundle up for both of them. One at 6 a.m., another tomorrow night at 6.20 p.m. 
So a pretty nice fishing game forecast there. Yep. Wish we could get some more sunshine in here for the weekend, but just not in the cards at this point. But I think the big story is that chill in the air for the middle of next week. And I may be too generous with the 50s and the 30s, so we'll have to watch that closely over the weekend. Those deer hunters that brave that cold air in the morning, though, I think they're going to have a good day, it looks uh, like. They're braver than I am, but good <laughs> luck to them. I think it's a good forecast for them. All right, well, coming up after the break, Macon's own bird lady plays host to the Seattle Seahawks unofficial mascot. He calls himself the Sea Pimp. It is 53 days and counting to making Bibbs consolidated government, but members are already working together. WGXA's Chase Ambrose shows you. It may not have been an official meeting, but it certainly was a historic one. It was the first time the commissioners elect of the consolidated Bibb County government gathered together. The purpose was to meet with the consolidation task force and learn about the progress that has been made so far, as well as what lies ahead. I think this is a tremendous time for Macon Bibb County, and, and uh, as I pointed out, uh, on the stroke of midnight, uh, we'll become the fourth largest city in Georgia, officially. Uh, and I think that that speaks volumes. So we are regaining our position of prominence. We are regaining our, our uh, positive attitude. Uh. But there's still much work to be done before the new government becomes official on January 1st. Elaine Lucas will be the only female in the new government, a position she doesn't take lightly. Um, it's a real um, obligation and a real responsibility that I have to make sure that all of those groups that I represent are indeed represented at the table. But I look forward to us doing a lot of things together to have a good working relationship because we've all stated that we are all in this thing together. The new government will be sworn in in a ceremony either on the evening of December 30th or the morning of December 31st and will adopt the city's charter at that time, but neither will become official until the stroke of midnight on the 31st. Chase Ambrose, WGXA. A recount for Warner Robins municipal positions was held this morning, and while the total votes for all the candidates didn't change, the percentage of candidate votes did see some minor changes because of a human error in the spreadsheet tabulations. There was not enough to change who will face general election leader Randy Toms. Joe Musselwhite will still face off against Toms for the city's mayor's runoff vote on December 3rd. Toms showed up today for what he said was respect for the system. He adds that the recount didn't hold up his campaign one bit. I was, it was good for me to be here this morning and see how everything turned out. But it doesn't change how I'm going to how I'm going to approach this the next 25 days. Besides the mayor's race, a runoff will be held for city council seat post one between current mayor Chuck Shaheen and incumbent Mike Daly. Well, happening right now, it is the first annual turnip festival in downtown Macon. The festival features local produce, art vendors, crafts, and live music at two second street venues, Roasted Cafe, and across the street over at the Crazy Bull. The event was the brainchild of the two businesses as a way to keep second street alive and vibrant. A uh, few of the business owners uh, on this block especially just wanted to get together and do something strictly local. So we wanted to keep that theme throughout the entire festival. Local music, local art, local jewelry. The music started at 6, but it's going on strong until about 2.30. Well, Macon's International Cherry Blossom Festival has been named by Georgia Magazine as its Reader's Choice Award winner for 2013. The city's annual Festival of Pink was featured in the October edition of the magazine as readers selected their favorites among a variety of categories. The festival, which began back in 1982, has previously been named a top 20 event in the South, a top 50 event in the United States, and a top 100 event in North America. Well, look out, Atlanta Falcons fans. It is the friendly battle of the football bird superfans. Macon's own the bird lady playing host to the sea pimp. Yes, you heard us right. That's what he calls himself. And yes, he is a Seattle Seahawk backer. It's all in advance of the Sunday afternoon showdown of the birds in the Georgia Dome. It, what a fan is that organization that celebrates all super fans from all sports arenas. So, um, you know, it's just a great brotherhood sisterhood to be a part of. I started going to the Seahawks games in 1976. I've been going for 38 years and I've sat front row and I help uh, lead the cheers and the wave. 
The Atlanta Falcons face off with the Seahawks on Sunday, and that'll take place on our sister station on Fox. Well, coming up after the break, gas-powered tools and fine art. When the two mix, it's usually destructive. However, that is not the case in gray this weekend. We'll have the full story coming up next. Gas powered tools and fine art. When the two mix, it's usually destructive. But that's not the case in gray this weekend. Instead of destroying, there's a whole lot of creating going on. Clinton Bourgeois goes to the Chaptacular Festival. It may not be the largest festival around, but it sure is the loudest. It's also the most action, action packed. With the scent of a freshly cut forest amid the flying sawdust, this up-and-coming festival has the roar of a NASCAR race, combined with the precision of surgery. It's fast, vigorous, uh, chainsaw sculpting, and uh, they'll see terrific art. From car ornaments to bearded men, if you can think of it, they can carve it. All that's needed is a little wood, and under the pecan trees of gray, there's plenty of it. Organizer and great native Chap Nelson has been chainsaw carving for 10 years now. He says what started out as a weekend get-together between buddies has grown into Chaptacular, now in its sixth year. So y'all, a rally of getting together of carvers, having fun, learning from each other, and, and also trying to benefit a good cause. The cause is cystic fibrosis. This is a rare disease. It's considered rare because only about 30,000 people um, are affected with the disease. One of the diagnosed is Sandy Nelson's 17-year-old son. The average life expectancy is 36 years, and that's currently not a cure. These artists from across the country are hoping it's somewhere inside these tree trunks. Last year we grossed over $6,000 that went directly to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation for research. And that's one thing these guys don't want to cut. Get as much as you can from this, you know, because it's made with love. Now, once again, the Chaptacular is held in gray at 341 Hungerford Road. The event is free to the public. Sculptures will present demonstrations, so you can learn how to do it if you want. And they'll also have sculptures that are up for sale. All the proceeds go to Finding a Cure for Cystic Fibrosis. That festival runs through the weekend. And right. they have they bring in some of the top guys yeah. from across the nation. They do amazing stuff. It's not it. that hard. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Did you see how intricate some of those cuts are? <laughs> it's incredible. And then they once they do. start the fire on it, that's when it really takes that color and the shape. It really, some cool stuff up yeah, there. They do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Overall, it's not a bad weekend for it, but they, it'll be a little cool, uh, but no rain. So I think they're rain free for the uh, festival up there. Seven days showing a uh, overall not a bad forecast as we go into the weekend. It will be one of at times limited sunshine, especially tomorrow. The bigger story though, winter like weather next week as far as temperatures are concerned. 50s Wednesday and Thursday, flirting with the 20s by Thursday morning. At this point, though, no precipitation in our forecast. That's a big, big thing right now. There's a lot of chatter on social media about right. it, but we're going to keep the forecast dry right now. But cold next week for sure. I guess it's a good time this weekend if you have to get some stuff winterized or, yes. or have any last plants or stuff that you yeah. can take care of, do yeah. it now. Hard freeze next week. All righty. Well, thanks for watching the news at 11 on WGXA. Now stay tuned for Jimmy Kimmel Live. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you again Monday morning, bright and early at 530. Until then, enjoy your Saturday and Sunday. Stay safe.